What up, boys? Hey guys, G- Greg Miller here. And uh, Jeff Ka- and, uh, and, and and Damon Hatfield. And we're here to talk about <coughs> spit bars. Spit. Welcome to Game School. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the self-titled, self-titled. podcast. Yeah, pop, now pop, pop, known pop. as Two Cucks. Two Cucks. I'm Cuck number one, Ellis. And I'm Cuck numero do- two-o. So, yeah, you better get ready. What's your spy. name? Cuck, um, um, ha- Cuck, Har- Harris. Cuck Lee Matthews. <laughs> Cuck Lee Matthews, Harris. And I'm James McCuck. <laughs> and together we are... Two, two Cucks. Cucks. Is that the opening now to every single podcast? Okay. It's beautiful. So, let's start things like we always do. Let's start them off. We talk about films. Yeah. Rather than talking about some films we've done seen and shit, let's talk about a future film that's going to be happening. It's going to be Oity. Joker origin movie. It's not a great idea. (laughs) It's not even a remotely good idea in my opinion. It's like contender for the one, like one of the worst ideas possible. I'm kind of hoping it co- they start making it and it becomes something else, and it's still a Joker movie, but it's like completely not. What... But even like the idea of like a solo Joker movie. Yeah. Like, it's worrying, that... isn't it? Because yeah. you you if you spend too much time with that character, it loses the effect. Mm. The reason why it's good in Dark Knight when he's legend, to, even though even if they have someone who has an amazing performance in this new Joker movie, it won't be as good as that. Because the reason it works in The Dark Knight is you get little doses of him, which means that every time he shows up, you want more. Mm. The scenes he's not in, he's stealing those scenes because you're just like, oh, show me the fucking Joker. Yeah, and also like because it's got it's got the same director as The Hangover, or it's meant to have the same director. Yeah. I ha- and <laughs> and the writer of Eight Mile. Yeah. Once you put all those elements together, I can't even tell you. What the tone of the fucking film is gonna and be? It's being, but the thing is, it's being produced by Martin Scorsese. Well, apparently, yeah. Like, I don't, I just don't see like how I, I can, I can see how they do an origin movie, but I just don't see like what kind of tone it's gonna go for. But that's the thing. If they said <laughs> Hangover, um, director, and like Judd Apatow was writing it or something <laughs> weird, I'd be like. I can sort of see where this is going. Yeah. But the fact they've got 8 Mile Boy up in here and then the director of fucking Hangover, I can't figure it out. <laughs> I can't even imagine what this film is going to be. Is it going to be like Zach Galifianakis playing the Joker? I mean, he's already done it once. Yeah, he um, <laughs> <laughs> Is he going to reprise the legendary role and then just be like a fat Joker who's just like, man, I love pussy. And he's like, but there ain't no girl for me. And then he meets Harley Quinn and he's like, damn. And the whole film is about him trying to fuck Harley Quinn and that's the origin story. That would make an entertaining but very, very bad film. Yes. This is why I don't know what they're doing also with Also, it doesn't tie into like, it also doesn't tie into the Jared Leto Joker and all like the DC mm. films currently but going on. So That said, that is a good point, I think. I think I like that it's not anything to do with that, because... I, th- I think that's the one like way in which the film could flourish, yeah. because it's not being knocked out um, to the others. I'm hoping the idea of saying it's a Joker origin story is a really loose term. I hope it's more of a... I don't know. More just like a Batman film. Oh, yeah? But it having Joker's... A sort of killing joke live action thing. All right. That could work. I mean, that could obviously work. Yeah. <laughs> if that's what it is, and that's what it has been the whole time, it's going to be much better. Yeah. And also, the thing about the guy, you know, who directed Hangover for being part of it, comedy um, people can do serious shit. Yeah. And, like, you the know. is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Heath Ledger was not... People, when they, when they announced Heath Ledger was a joke, people were like, the fuck? The guy <laughs> from Ten Things I Hate About You? Yeah. Who's all edgy and cool and Australian? Yeah. And he's done basically, I don't know if I'd say the most, but one of the most iconic roles in cinema of all time. Yeah. Like, and I think you just have faith. Yeah, also... But I, I, I mean, no one wants this film to do badly. No one wants this to be a bad film. Yeah. The best case scenario is everyone thinks it's going to be terrible, it and it's amazing. Yeah. You know? Um, I don't think... I, don't, I think that might not be the case, though, because... If we're thinking of DC's mindset, they know that Joker is now the most profitable character alongside Harley Quinn. Yeah. If they put out a trailer saying Harley Quinn is in this film, it will sell. They're just going to mine it from. They'll make millions. Yeah. 
And they won't even have to do any proper work. No, like look at Suicide Squad. Yeah, which is what scares me. Because yeah. that's when, you know, they care. They, they don't need to care about making a good film. Yeah. Because even if it's shit, people will go see it. And plus, like, they must have made, like, double the amount of money just off merchandise. Yeah. Because that's... Because, like, like, you see, like, girls around, like, town wearing, like, Harley Quinn stuff all the time. I mean, I, I saw Batman vs. Superman twice. Yeah. And I was like, well, why can I fucking do that? Because <laughs> second time, I thought... I actually thought second time around, watch Batman vs. Superman, it wasn't as bad as the first time. I preferred it the second time. Because I wasn't expecting so much, and I just enjoyed the parts that I enjoyed. Yeah. But, I mean, Batman vs. Superman is not good. I was really hoping that this this new sort of way they're trying to do a Joker film is DC being like... Maybe this DCU isn't working out. Let's cancel it. Let's just do standalone films. But it's unlikely because they make so much fucking money from it. Yeah, and plus like Shazam's gonna start shooting next year, and like and and um Aquaman's still shooting, and Justice League's gonna come out and whatnot. And then plus like they announced plus they've got like Batgirl and like Flashpoint and everything like that. I would <coughs> I would really on. like them to just not do it though. <laughs> If they told me all of that was cancelled, but they're still going to have the characters in standalone films, or if they just did a bunch of like standalone films, make them really good, and then tie them together. Yeah, which is the way you meant to do it. Yeah, which is the way Marvel did it, yeah. and that's why it works. DC tried to miss a step, right? <laughs> DC didn't even do the um. They didn't even go straight to doing Justice League first film, right? Yeah. What they did was it's like how do I put it? It's like if an Iron Man. It's like if Spider-Man Homecoming came out yeah. before Iron Man came out and the <laughs> Avengers came out. Okay, right, yeah. It would be like, okay, but this is meant to be an established world. This feels weird. Because what they've done is they've made a film that focuses around two heroes, both of which still haven't completely been established in this, in this world yeah. hasn't been established. There should have been a Batman film. There should have been a Superman film. Yeah. should have been a Wonder Woman film. And then do that. And then do that. We still haven't had a fucking Batman film. And like... like sure, Batman is... That'll make a lot of money. Batman is, is money. DC. He is yeah. DC. I mean, and they've made a Wonder Woman, Woman movie before yeah. him. I mean, the Wonder Woman movie is pretty good, but like, still, yeah. I want Batman. Batman should have been the first one. Hmm. Batman should have been alongside Man of Steel. Yeah, it should have came out the same year. Yeah. Yeah. Because everyone loved Batman. Yeah. I think Ben Affleck was actually alright as Batman. I think I, he was pretty good. I just don't feel like he's gotten, like, the best material. No. Yet. But, like, what's... I think if he wrote it, or if he was directing, or, you know, fucking get Kevin Smith and him to make a fucking Batman film. Can you imagine I, that? I feel, I feel like he probably... Yeah. I, he's, he's written... Kevin Smith has written some weird Batman comics. Yeah. I feel like if he was under control, yeah. he could probably do a really good job with it. And him and Ben Affleck have a really good working relationship. And yeah. It would be awesome. But yeah. DC doesn't care. <laughs> you know, if they find some of their, like, Zack Snyder makes film, but he doesn't really get in our way much, fuck it. You know? Yeah. His daughter's dead now. Maybe that's a sign, Zach. <laughs> I'm such a dark <laughs> joke. But yeah, I, I don't care about DC anymore. And I used to be one of people who'd be like, well, at least DC, you know, they don't make as many films as Marvel, but when they make a film, it's, like, amazing. That's changed quite that's a bit That's the complete opposite. Yeah. And I'm tired of Marvel, to be honest, because they, all of their films are shot the same, and it all sort of feels the same. The writing feels the same. Nothing feels unique I think in it's it. Changed. It has, it has, I mean, it has improved. It started to. I think Homecoming was a good sign. I think Guardians Galaxy is. Yeah, well. really Guardians Galaxy important. and Homecoming, I think, are the most unique properties. Doc- they have. I've also Doctor Strange feels different from those. I two. haven't seen Doctor Strange. All right, well, yeah. Is it good? Yeah, I liked it a lot. Yeah. Right. But yeah, movies, movies, yeah. and for some reason, Pineapple Express is in 4K. But, um, <laughs> Star Wars, Not Force, Star Wars. Of, Force Awakens isn't. No Marvel films, just that. Speaking of films being remastered and redone, yeah. Terminator 2 Judgment Day is getting a re-release in Freaky cinemas. For one night only in this country. And it's been re-released in the last week in America for quite a while. And I'm not sure if I feel anything about it. I think it's fine. I think there's a, I think there's a difference between... Well, there's not really a difference between anything. I think it's really good to take old films and re, you know, yeah. give them to a audience. Especially ones that are as, the others are as iconic as. Yeah. So we still. saw. Well, I saw both of the first two Alien films yeah. in cinema, and you know, um, I I would have never gotten to see Alien in a cinema hmm. when it first came out, and so that was a really cool experience because Alien is is I think is a masterpiece, right. and Aliens is is arguably just as good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I really like Aliens as well, but it's 
I think with, with Judgment Day, it sort of reached a legendary status of being like the quintessential Terminator film yeah. and the quintessential Arnie film. Yeah, pretty much. And it, it's a really good film. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty much stood the test of time. Yeah, and um, I mean, the CG still looks really good. Yeah. So they put so much care and effort into it. Yeah. This, this is the thing, I think, when, when Hollywood and stuff sort of started and even up until, like, I think early 2000s, you had to really give a fuck about what your film was. Yeah. Because there were no franchises where you could be like, this will make money, maybe apart from James Bond, but that was it. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Or King Kong. Like, and that been around for, like, 40 years. Yeah. yeah. And um, <clears throat> it was only until, like, Spider-Man came around in 2000, whatever it was, and they were like, oh, well, every time you make a Spider-Man film, even though three was shit, we make money. Let's make a maze as well. And then, like, Marvel came in with Iron Man and all sorts, and it was like, well, this is interesting. Yeah. And now we're in the current landscape we're in. I mean, I guess you could say back in the day it was Westerns, yeah. but they didn't ever really make that much money. They were just so easy to make yeah. that even if it didn't make that much money, you still got money. And apart from the superhero films, they cost a lot to make. Yeah, but they always sell. Yeah. For the mo- unless it like unless it's really bad or something. Yeah. For the most part, they always do quite well. But I mean, when was the last time there was a really bad superhero film that didn't do very well? Fan Four Stick. Yeah. yeah. That's it. And that was like two years ago or so. Yeah. And it didn't break anybody. Because Suicide Squad was not good, and that made like. I think Suicide Squad cool. might be worse than Fan Four Stick just because <coughs> of how little it like. No, well, I say that, but like, no one gave a fuck about Fan Four Stick. I feel like, no. I, I prefer Suicide Squad to Fan Four Stick. Yeah. That's the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer Suicide Squad. But yeah, re-releasing... I'd, what would I really like to see re-released in film? I'd like to see Cockroach Cork Orange in the cinema. Mm. I'd really like to see... Um, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe like the first Rambo. I would really like to see Blade Runner, because I've seen it twice, and it hasn't really stuck with me, and mm. it feels like a film I should really love, but I don't. Yeah, I feel like maybe and everyone seems to love it. I feel like maybe if I saw it on the, sc- mm. saw it on the cinema screen, that might help. And I, and they might do that, because 2049 is coming out really yeah, soon. Yeah, it seems likely, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I'd like to see Mad Max in the cinema. That'd be fun, yeah. It's quite a few older films, so it'd just be great. It was, you know, great going to that film maybe festival. the classic Star Wars films. Yeah. Yeah. The first one. Four through six. Yeah, yeah. That'd be great. But yeah, speaking of films that are really good. Really good. Um, <laughs> Max Payne had a film adaptation once. Yeah, didn't Let's not talk about it because it was <laughs> awful. I have seen it. Um, it's just Mark Wahlberg was such a weird choice. And it was like five years too late. It came out like, I think it came out like... 2008 I saw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is like five years after the second game came out. <laughs> And I was like, why? What the fuck is this? Yeah. And also, they, in the cinema and the actual, most of the releases, they cut out... The guy, sh- the director, shot two films. He shot one, which was with blood, blood squibs okay. and swearing with his original script, and one which they actually used, which just had impact squibs and PG-13 language. I was thinking, make it like, make more money. <clears throat> it's not good. <laughs> Don't watch it. <laughs> just let it die. Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk about Max Payne as a whole, the game series, just because I, uh, I was at a family thing this weekend, and I was like, Max Payne's pretty bomb-ass, the first one. I just, I'd never finished the last couple of levels of it, so I downloaded it on my iPad, because they released it on mobile a couple of years ago, and I played through the whole thing in like a day, and with headphones on, I was playing it with that, and I thought, that was really good, <laughs> that was really good. And because this is the fucking new iPad, it ran really smoothly. Yeah. And I was like, that was really fun. I want to play the other Max Paynes now and feel like that progression of the character. I'd never played two properly. I had it on PC. I'd never properly played it. Played through that whole <coughs> game. It's actually surprisingly short. I yeah. thought that was really good. Then I played Max Payne 3, which is, like I said, uh, I think it was last week, is, in my opinion, one of the best games made in the last decade. Okay. And I stand by that, because I think it is. Um, but something interesting came out of me playing it. Max Payne 3, I now understand why loads of fans don't like it. It feels very different gameplay-wise. It's not, yeah. Gameplay is the tightest, most satisfying Max Payne there has been when yeah. it comes to gameplay. But the story 
it does not feel like a Max Payne game. And it's so disjointed from those original two that it doesn't feel like the same entity. I actually, halfway through playing Max Payne 3 again, I thought, how is this the same guy from the other two? Okay. In Max Payne 3, Max is, is, is constantly swearing and being angry and he's like shouting and being like shut the fuck up and all this other stuff it reminds me of logan okay the way logan is in logan and in the other two max Payne's, he's a soft-spoken a sort of slow narration and he's this thought-provoking character and that's it hmm. he, he'd never really get angry and he's just this guy who's down and he accepts you know his fate in life has been shit and it, I, i'm not sure what max Payne 3 would have been if remedy had taken the reins on it It'd be a very different game. Yeah. Um, but that said, I can't dislike Max Payne 3. Because oh, I right. think it is a masterpiece. No, I'm not, no, I, I, I got like halfway through the, like through Max Payne 1. <coughs> and I finished Max Payne 3. And I remember there was this other game that came out in like 2008 or something. John, um, John, uh, John Woo's Stranglehold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then to me, that felt more like Max Payne than Max Payne 3. Really? In terms of gameplay, because like, yeah. that's around a lot more. I think it's a really interesting direction for the character. Yeah. But, sort of spoiler alert, at the end of Max Payne 2, he gets to a point where he's accepted <coughs> his yeah. life. He's been like, okay, that's alright. I can cope. It's fine. Mm. I don't need to be depressed anymore. I just live my life and get on with it. And that felt like the end of Max Payne. Yeah, like and then... In three, he's he, it starts with him at this point where he's an alcoholic, he's drug abusing, he's a mess. Mm. And I'm kind of like, what happened between then and there? You know, the theory is that he sort of just, you know, hope can only last for so long, and eventually he's just like, ah, you know what, fuck it, and he went into drinking. Mm. But they never touch on it in the game. And because the second game of Max Payne referenced the first one loads, mm. and it was very interconnected as one sort of property... Three doesn't touch any of those, like at all. Maybe a name mention or something. And it feels really disconnected from it. That said, Max Payne Three is fucking awesome. The <laughs> character in Max Payne Three is not the same person in Max Payne One and Two, right. but he is awesome, and he's so like the writing is really clever in the third one, and the presentation and the storytelling and the way the whole game is done yeah. is my favorite. Okay. It's my favorite of the three Max Paynes. Do I 100% agree with where Rockstar took it? No. Okay. I think it's actually not perfect. But, in, it's, but yeah, it's my favourite. Okay. And I think it's one of the best games. It is one of the best games <laughs> made in the last 10 years. Is it necessarily a Max Payne game? Not so much. But it has that title. Okay. Which makes it a weird case. But yeah, I, um, I checked my Steam thing. I put 42 hours into Max Payne 3, <laughs> which is a lot when I consider I haven't played multiplayer. I've just played the story mode a few times because yeah. I love it. And on PC, it's like the best. I never really played multiplayer. I, I played a lot of it on Xbox. Right. Um, I got to like level 40, but it was oh. fine. It was fun. It was just stupid fun. Yeah. But I, the, <laughs> on Xbox and PS3, it was fine. But honestly, I know I sound like I don't play many games on PC the PC version of Max Payne, all of them, and especially 3, it's so smooth, and the fact there is no like hard lock aim or anything, mm. and the way that the shoot dodging works and you aiming through midair is, I wouldn't say easy, but just feels easier, because okay. you're actually pointing and stuff, it's brilliant. Max Payne 3 is amazing, finish with the subject, Yeah. <laughs> it's different to the other two, but yeah, it's not okay. bad, it's just different. If they made four, Max Payne four, yeah. I I feel like honestly they should get Sam Lake in to actually do writing on it because for three they consulted Remedy yeah. for like advice and stuff and what do you think about this plot point and things like that. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what they say because if they think it's better, they're going to stick with it. Um, doesn't Sam doesn't um, Max Payne three have like a lot of references um, uh, to North mythology and stuff like that? No, the first one does. First, no, Max Payne one. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And then they lost that in like the third one. They don't even have it in the second one though. I mean, they have. They, this is like nightclub called Ragnarok. Okay. And all sorts of things like that. And the drug is called Valkyr. And um, but it's it's more of just a thing of like a way of adding another layer to the context of the first game. Yeah. But the second one's really good. It's like a love story. It's not. It's not a happy game, but it's really good. 
Aren't there multiple endings on the second one? There's two multiple endings. You only get the other one if you finish it on the hardest difficulty. Oh, okay. Um, which I've actually finished Max Payne 3 on the hardest difficulty, yeah. which is not easy. Because <laughs> Max Payne 3 on easy mode is hard. Does that include New York Minute mode? Uh, no. Because isn't, um, like, isn't that, um, you have to build a combo to like, keep a timer yeah. up? No, this is old school. So what you do, you play the whole game in like a revamped, ridiculous looking version of Max Payne 1 Max Payne okay. in Max Payne 3. And you have no cover and... The painkillers work like they do in the other games. That's cool. I like that. Um, it's really fun. Yeah. It's hard as fuck mm. because a lot of the cutscenes, Max will go straight into cover at the start of it, mm. and then he'll get pushed right back out. <laughs> and you're like, fuck, it's hard. But it's really fun, and I finished it. But yeah, if they did a Mac P4, not even sure where they would take it. That's why I don't work at Rockstar <laughs> because I wouldn't know. Yeah. Um, I think the only direction you can take it now is have him. Just be an old man. And I think the only way you can really, really end Max Payne is with him dying. He's already in like his 50s in the third game though, isn't he? He's like 40, 40 something, yeah. Okay. So it's it'd be difficult. Mm. But I could see it happening. Yeah. And, and it would be good. It would be very good. Yeah. It would be awesome. A Logan-style Max Payne. In fact, I was thinking the other day, if they wanted, they could almost take it into slightly in the future... Yeah. Where where things were where, where like city where like New York City were similar to like um the way that Gotham is in Dark Knight Returns where it's sort of overrun with like uh punks and okay you know riots and stuff that make an interesting game mm. if not Max Payne three I think has a pretty fulfilling ending for the character yeah. in essence I actually think Max Payne two has a pr- pretty fulfilling ending okay it feels like the noir Max Payne dies there anyway and Max Payne two. Okay. And that's why they had to revamp it for three, because I don't think they could have done that for another game. Right. They could have dragged it out. But yeah, that's the end of my rant about Max Payne. Yeah. I really like Max Payne. He's a good guy. <laughs> Had a lot of bad shit, but... <laughs> um, just following up last week, from my Uncharted Lost Legacy. Yeah. Played the shit out of it. I think it's really good. People are saying it's you know it's the weakest Uncharted game. I've seen a few people say it's their favourite on Twitter. Yeah, I think it's um I think it's better than the first one. All right. Um, I enjoy it more than any of the first trilogy, to be honest, just because of I prefer the engine of four. Oh, the, the gameplay. The things. gameplay and everything, and the story and the way everything flows. I prefer that so much more. Yeah. Also, the ending sequence. Not going to spoil it here, but it's like a combination of every single best. It's a combination. Of every action, the best action scenes that everyone remembers from each game combined. Okay. So like the the really infamous one from Uncharted Two is the train ride, and yeah. you're fighting on top of a train. The infamous one from Uncharted Four is this one where you're on a grappling hook on the back of an SUV and you're pulling yourself up, and then you jump from car to car to car to motorbike to car to car yeah. and shooting. Right. Combines those, so you jump off a train into a car and then you drive off, shoot some guys, jump off the car back onto the train, fight the boss or something, um, swing around, jump on a motorcycle, shoot people, jump back onto the train. Okay. That's the ending sequence. That does sound like fun. And I was playing it, I sat on my sofa, I was like, I actually verbally said, it's very rare that it happens, I verbally said, holy fuck. <laughs> Because it was so like, and the graphics are amazing, and the performance runs so smoothly, and you're like, this is amazing. Also, there's um, there was a sequence in Uncharted Four where they sort of they put you in Madagascar with a car and a map, and they just like go go do the mission. You'll get there eventually. Just explore a bit, shoot a couple of guys, explore these ruins if you want. That's optional. Yeah. And then you get there, and that was really cool. Lost Legacy. There's a huge like the main chunk of the game takes place in this um this really big open world and it's it's actually really big for what it is there's like seven seven sort of things you can explore to look at right. and then also if you find a certain thing that's hidden you can go around and collect um 11 tokens and if you collect all 11 tokens it's all optional this is all optional yeah. if you find this op- you find this optional temple just happen to find it by driving past you go in that it it shows up a screen and it's like oh there's 11 of these tokens mark them on your map you go solve 11 of these puzzles, completely optional still, yeah. collect all these tokens, go back, you do it, you get a thing that tells you when treasures are nearby, okay. collectibles. I'm like, that's so optional. <laughs> all right. It's completely optional. <clears throat> you don't have to do it. And then there's also these other things where you can find um, 
you know, groups of enemy camps and stuff, and you just shoot, have a shootout. And then after you finish that section of the game, you've explored everything, yeah. you move on. And there's still, like, four hours. <laughs> I was just impressed. And for the money, I think it's really worth it. Yeah, it's like £25 pounds or something. A lot of people, yeah, a lot of people said that the secondary character wasn't entertaining. I think she really was. I think the writing was good, as it always is. Yeah. I thought the tone was very different. I really liked the, the setting of India. I think it worked really well for Uncharted. Yeah. And um, I really enjoyed it. Okay. I really had a good time. I just wish there was more to it, apart from multiplayer, because I don't really care about multiplayer. Well, it's fun. I don't really care. Yeah. I wish there was more like a... Challenge mode? Sorry. Challenge mode, yeah. Or like a... There is a co-op survival mode, but I prefer a version where it was like co-op survival with the characters back and forth and stuff. All right. You know, an actual storyline co-op thing. But yeah, Child Lost Legacy for the money... And for the quality they put in, and for the time, the length of the game, I think it's worth it. Right. I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. Death Note. Death Note. <laughs> well, yeah, I, yeah um, so, so there was, so, so um, a few years back I watched, I think I watched most of the Death Note anime with my brother, I can't really remember it, so I, so I came into this film pretty blind. But I was kind of looking forward to it, cause, um, because it's got the same, it's the same director as Your Next and, and The Guest. Oh shit, is it? Yeah, and I really liked those two films, I thought Blair Witch was, was, was good. Yeah, it's I fine. It. Yeah, I liked it. But Death Note is like a monumentous pile of shit, and it's so so funny <clears throat> because like the acting, like the main character Light, he's abysmal. He's actually he's trash as an actor. I'm not sure if he's a trash actor, but he's just a really bad character. Right. He's an absolute wimp. I, I showed you that video of him screaming. Yeah. <laughs> just, just look up Death Note Light screaming <laughs> on YouTube, you'll see. Um, <laughs> it, it looks interesting. It looks weird. Yeah. It just and you showed me that clip I think where they're like taking a picture and he goes like sticks his tongue out because oh yeah edgy. <laughs> does the film feel like it's trying to relate to teens it does no like and, and like light he's like really like he's like really um I'm not sure uh, like sarcastic not very sarcastic but he says like a bunch of, like intelligent no like at one point like there's like because he's like sixteen or something in the film no he's seventeen there's like a it's like, and like this this one guy's like beating up some girls and he's like hey get off them and then he's like hey you, you got hold back for four years so if you punch me that's child abuse or like an actual line in the film and and, 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 and he's trying it's meant to be like oh he's so clever yeah I wish I was like him yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and Jesus it's like all these awkward scenes where he's like pulling out the laptop and he's like and he's like trying to impress this girl he's saying like hey I'm, I'm gonna kill this criminal or like on this live stream and then it's like really badly acted. I think I had to watch it handy. now. It's it's very. <laughs> is it so bad? It's good. <laughs> I I I couldn't stop laughing for like the entire. Film. <laughs> I will give it. I'll watch it tonight then. No, it just there's this one scene where it's, it's, it's where Light and the girl that they're falling out this Ferris wheel, mm. and it's playing this um like really slow eighties rock music, and it's like really dramatic, and I was crying with laughter. I will watch it tonight then. It's one of the funniest films I've seen in a long time. Okay. <laughs> Really is Willem Dafoe good? He's entertaining, I'll say that. Okay. He's Does fun. he fit the role? I think so, yeah, okay. he's fun. And also it's got a really complicated dumb ending and it sets up a sequel. It's like A sequel? <laughs> it sets up a sequel, yeah. Fuck. And I'm like, oh god. It's they probably cool. make it though. So. There'll be enough people so. who, who who are like, oh boy. A lot of people who won't even know it's based on anime. Yeah. Probably the same people who like Term Thirteen Reasons Why. Are gonna, probably, yeah. yeah. I can see this that. seems like a perfect thing for them. Yeah. Because it's like really edgy and dark. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say that and you made it sound funny but to this them true, they're yeah. like oh this is so dark it's so, yeah. yeah I watched this movie at the weekend called Death Note it's so dark it's so, it's so original it's so original I feel so cultured they wouldn't even they wouldn't even know that it's based on anime yeah. they'll probably fucking love the actor who plays Light and say he's a teenage heartthrob and then they'll have enough funding to make the next Netflix movie. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Unfortunately, you can see it happening already. Yeah. It was also great because when I was watching it, I was texting somebody, like, I was, I was watching it, I was texting somebody, like, who absolutely loved the anime. Yeah. And he was like, what the fuck am I watching? This is nothing like that. <laughs> and it's got this really awkward chase scene with this weird, like, synth dubstep thing over I, I'm really look for, looking forward to it now. It's very, it's very I fun. still haven't seen Dunkirk, but I'm going to watch Death <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't seen Dunkirk, oh but I have seen the Emoji movie, and I'm gonna watch Death Note. Uh, last topic of the day. Last topic. Yeah. Let's have a little talk about Ass Creed, Harry. Ass Creed. Ass Creed. Yeah. Assassin's Creed. The new one. Well, just Assassin's Creed in general. Hmm. Ever since Assassin's Creed Two, it's like the series went up, up. Yeah. It's not even like the games have been that bad. 
I think Syndicate and Unity. I think Unity's a fine game. I think Syndicate is actually a really good game. Oh yeah. But they never got the audience because Unity fucked up so much technically. Yeah. Um, this new Assassin's Creed, I think it is a travesty what they're doing with the marketing of it. They're oh, yeah. trying to Ubisoft do this. I think it's more of an issue with Ubisoft than Assassin's Creed because. Ubisoft have just, they've gone from this sort of French developer who are making really unique games yeah. to being like, how can we make money? <laughs> and that's all they do. Yeah. They release like five editions of a game. And there's always a gold edition oh, that has a season pass. <laughs> and then the season pass content comes out and it adds like a two couple hours. missions on the maybe one of, one of those DLCs is sort of original and cool, but it's like two hours. Yeah. I mean, that's it. I mean, in recent times, the only game which I've seen which has been like really embraced is Rainbow Six Siege. People yeah. seem to really love that. And I think season passes are well. They're just a bit of a fuck. Yeah. Well, that's the only way it's <laughs> just a bit of a fuck. Yeah. Arkham Knight had one. Which was... I didn't feel like it was worth it, mm-hmm. but I enjoyed all the content that came out just because I love Arkham Knight. Yeah. And I did like the most wanted expansion bit, but I don't think was it was like enough. Only, uh, and that was the only new story content. Yeah. Um, missions, mm. but they were very, they were fine. Um, I think season pass that does work is is Witcher. You know, they only released two expansion passes for a really cheap price, yeah. and you got so much content. Mm. And who 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 cares? Yeah. It was twenty pounds. They didn't change the price. Yeah. And you get like eighty hours. You know, TV Project Red are just in a league of their own though. Yeah. They they don't need to fuck with like what Ubisoft does. But yeah, Ubisoft, like, they're releasing Far Cry as well. There's, like, five editions of that coming out. Yeah. Um, but the main travesty, <laughs> which is... I think this is the most absurd Ubisoft has ever gotten. They've done a lot of shit. Um, is Assassin's Creed Origins coming out this year? October? Yeah, October, yeah. Is, um... Has an edition called Dawn of the Creed Legendary Edition, which is £700. Yeah. That's a lot. Of, that's a, that's and we sh- looked at the editions between the Dawn of the Creed and the Dawn of the Creed Legendary Edition. Isn't like Dawn of the Creed like 120? Uh, the Dawn of the Creed is like 120, yeah. And yeah. Dawn Legendary Edition is 100, two, 700 pounds. <laughs> the only difference is a rare amulet and a different figurine that you can't get anywhere else. And I'm like, I don't. I'm a pretty big Assassin's Creed fan, or I used to consider myself to be one. Yeah. And I don't know, even if I was rich, that I'd consider that. Yeah. Because it just seems so stupid. And like, you're, and if, and if you want to sell them, like, even if you want to sell them like, um, on eBay in a few years, yeah, I still don't think many people would even want to buy it then. Yeah. Mm. Um. So up until Black Flag was the last one, I got the collector's <coughs> edition every year. All right. I saved up, or I got my birthday money, or or Christmas present or something. I always got the collector's edition because okay. I loved Assassin's Creed. And I was like, oh boy! <laughs> and then I got a figurine that I never put up. And I got DLC that never meant anything. But I got a collector's edition that looked cool. All right. And I got it every year. Then Unity came out. I didn't get it. I actually... I actually, That was the first year where I got Far Cry 4. Played the shit out of that. And I was like, Unity looks alright. I got it. All right. um, Syndicate came out. Got it straight away. I actually think Syndicate is very good. But because of what happened with Unity, no one bought it. And that's why they revamped it. Which is a good thing. It's a good thing in a sense that Syndicate didn't do very well. Yeah. Because it means that we're getting a revamp. But my problem is with it this looks... new Assassin's Creed game, it looks like Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, it doesn't look much new of anything. No, it looks like Assassin's Creed with RPG elements, which is what it is. Yeah. But it's like, you haven't changed anything. <laughs> I really wanted it to be something different. Mm. I really wanted the camera to be different. I wanted the way the world looked and the way, the way that you sort of free roam and everything. I know that it can do it differently. Mm. And it didn't. No. Because it was so easy to make money off of. And um, the dev team seemed passionate, but I've already seen loads of previews saying that the main character it seems really bland and stoic, similar to Connor in no. Assassin's Creed 3, and I'm just like, um, nope. <laughs> this doesn't look good. Yeah. I'm not going to get it when it comes out. I'll wait to see what reviews say, because I'm still not sure about it. Yeah. I think Far Cry 5 at the same time is a bit of a weird one, because... You know, when they first released those initial trailers, I was really interested. And, we, you know, you and me were theorising yeah. about what it was going to be. And some of the ideas we were coming up with, I was like, I hope it's that. Yeah. It'd be so cool. And the actual product is... It looks fine. fine. It looks, it looks like... Do you know what it looks like? Yeah. Far Cry. <laughs> it looks sure like is Far, Far Cry, Cry 4, yeah. and it looks like Far Cry 3. Mm-hmm. 
No, because um, 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 I think it was during uh, um, I think it was during E3, like like whenever like whenever like whenever they bought out Far Cry, something we're like, oh, it sure looks like Far Cry. Yeah. <laughs> when they bought like a new franchise of anything. Well, so like we were watching the Xbox conference at the mm. same time, and they brought out Assassin's Creed Origins, and I was oh, like, yeah. like, I was like really excited. I was like, finally, let's see what this game is like. <laughs> Yeah. And we watched it, and I was like, well, "This doesn't look, yeah, different." Yeah, and plus, like, yeah, and, and Wolfenstein comes out the same day as Assassin's Creed. And I can't wait for Wolfenstein. <laughs> Wolfenstein into Collector's Edition, Harry. And that looks great. And it doesn't cost seven hundred pounds, yeah. and it has so much <laughs> better content than the Assassin's Creed one does. Yeah, it has a fucking action figure in Nazi packaging. It looks awesome. Yeah. I'm really excited to play Wolfenstein Home Three. It looks. Oh, I love Wolfenstein. <laughs> I just love Wolfenstein. I love the direction that Bethesda are taking yeah. as well, and I can't wait for that game. Just so much fun. Assassin's Creed Origins, going to see what the reviews say. Yeah. Ubisoft need to fix their game. Mm. They need to just fix what they're doing. They won't, because they make loads of money, yeah. but it, it is getting to a point now when you're charging £700 for a collector's edition, when, why... I mean, somebody has to buy it. If yeah, but do effort. you need that much? You're making a video game and you still charge fifty pounds for it, yeah. which is higher than most people charge. And then on top of that, you're like, "There's a season pass coming," and you announce the season pass the same day as you announce the game. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I can't imagine the developers there. Once the game has come out, they really give a fuck, yeah. because Ubisoft, as a as a comp- business side of things, just sabotage everything they feel. Pretty much, yeah, because. I mean, like, I think like the best thing they've done this year is probably a Mario and Rabbids. Yeah, probably which like, looks really fun. Yeah, and again, like really good reviews. I saw like GameSpot gave it a nine out of ten. Yeah, it's like I want to get a Switch for that. To be honest, it looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, oh, right. Luigi dabs in the trailer. I saw. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna see how Mario Odyssey does. Yeah, if it if it is as good as it looks, it I look will good. take. Christmas money or birthday <laughs> money, and I will get myself one of them switcheroos, and I will play the shit out of it. Maybe it might have gone down in price a bit by then. Probably will have. Yeah. And I want to play Mario Kart. Mario Kart is fun. Yeah. Right, that is the end of episode four of. Episode four. Of the cut. Cu- two cucks. Cu- Just cu- two guys chilling, yeah, and yes. they like ducks. What Mighty are ducks. they? Great movie. They're Maybe two cucks. Classic actor. <laughs> Two cucks. Two cucks. Two cucks. Two cucks. And I'm going to call this episode The Cuck Within. (laughs) Bye, boys.